Hello. There are a few more seconds of the, of the video. Okay. Yes. On the, okay. it's happening. Okay. Hey, we're live. Hello. <laughs> How is everybody? I hope everyone can hear us very well. Yes. And you can notice from behind us, uh, Rosen and I are here in Sofia, Bulgaria. So we're joining you and some of our colleagues from all over. I think we're going to have Rick join us and Sam, and they're in Texas. So pretty exciting. And just as a reminder, everybody, we're here to talk about the R1 release. Yeah, and the amazing thing is that we have Eve here, so I can do this. Right? <laughs> we can make it interactive. Um, and it's about 5 o'clock p.m. here this time, but I know people are joining us from all different time zones, so we're happy to take a little bit of time out. Uh, but what we want to do here today is give you an overview of what is coming or what came in the R1 release. We're actually going to do some roaming videos in a little bit, so this will be exciting. So you get to see some of the faces behind the products. And we're going to talk about a lot of the different products that came out in this release. So we're going to be talking about our progress and our Telerik UI. We're going to be talking about reporting. And Rose and I are here to talk to you about Fiddler, so we can, we can kick that off. And is Rick with us? I'm not seeing him. Okay, not a problem. He'll join us a little bit later. Oh, there he is. See, all I had to do was ask, and he'll appear. Hey, Rick. Hello. How's it going, Rick? Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Yep. We Perfect. Do. Hello. Good morning. And you're joining us from Texas, right? I am in lovely Round Rock, Texas, at the beautiful Kalahari Hotel and Convention Center. Nice. So, hey, everyone. Hey, I'm Sam. just hopping on as well. So, uh, Rick and me are actually uh, physically in the same spot. We just don't like each other enough to be you know, in the same you know, room. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we are, uh, we are in beautiful Round Rock, Texas. And we're all over the you know, place today, um, uh, friends from all over the world, just celebrating a, a big, big release. This was uh, a lot of effort, a lot of moving pieces. And, uh, you know, we streamlined a lot of our workflows. So, this was, you know, big release for us. So we're here to celebrate all the things. And, you know, uh, this is just, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, coming out uh, just, you know, fresh from the release yesterday, but we will do, you know, in-depth webinars that's coming up in the, you know, the next two weeks. Exactly. And I think today we're going to have Rick kick it off with some reporting for us. He always pulls out some magic um, when it comes to reporting. Him and Sam have done some cool demos in the past. I don't know what he has for us today, but I'll let him take it from here. Great. Thanks, Eve. Um, well, actually, I just got the bits uh, of everyone else yesterday. So what I have today is a uh, vibrant discussion uh, of our product and what happened uh, this time around. And um, our audience can uh, very much come join me while I have something exciting to show on the live webinar. Um, but we can talk a lot about what happened with this release. There's a lot of good things that came out. Um, that uh, I'm very, very excited about. So let's see, what was one of the one of the biggest things that I think to come out this release, something that's been asked for quite a bit, and that was the, um, we're calling it the shared data source or predefined data source uh, for reporting. So I think a lot of the people who have heard me talk about reporting before, we talk about how you can bring in all kinds of data to your reports, uh, whether it be JSON, XML, inline, remote, uh, from SQL, from services. So, so wherever your data is, whatever it's, how it's formatted, flat or hierarchical, um, it's going to be have some way to get into reporting. And that's always been you know uh, a big feature. But you kind of had to reinvent the wheel just slightly when you had the same reports that were using the same data. You had to sort of have that same connectivity other than the connection string, the same selection queries, the same data massaging for each report. It was just part of the setup. And we had a lot of things over the years to make that easier. We built templates, you know, we built ways to reuse some elements, but you still had to change if you made a change to something systematically, you had to go into each report using that data and reflect that change through. And for large companies, enterprises, that may have been um, uh, a little bit annoying. So what we have is a shared data source, which allows you to basically create that connection criteria once and store it as part of your entire operation and use that. Yeah. That's a feedback there. Use that inside of your report um, sort of universally. And that's a, that's a really, really cool feature. I'm looking forward to um, being able to show and play with for everybody. Um, so just this. Uh, 
So yeah, that's a great uh, something. One of the great new features that came out. Um, the like I said, the paint is still wet on it, so I'm I'm still uh, hitting it with the hammer, and uh, and seeing where all the uh, all the corners of it are. You can um, so what I've seen so far. Create this uh, shared data source once. Load it into your report, whether it be report server or our standalone reporting package, um, and utilize that across all of your reports. Um, so I think uh, I think that's something that the team should be immensely proud of. Um, you know, to leverage all of that additional utility in the solution just brings you know more end-to-end -end value to the product. Let's see what else came out in this release that we can talk about. So. Uh, last few times around, we talked a lot about the native uh, report viewer for Blazor. So just to set the context for this, um, previous to the native version, we had, of course, our wrapped report viewer for Blazor. It allowed you to you know, bring in what was our jQuery-based report viewer quite simply. It's an item template, drop in your project, and, and it could run. But you know, I'm a bit of a Blazor fanboy too, Sam knows this. Um, one of the greatest things is that you can just entirely get rid get rid of uh, JavaScript, JavaScript reliance, you know, if that's sort of what you're going for. Um, so it was always a little little strange to have to bring in a jQuery-based widget. So the team uh, kind of agreed with me in a lot of our uh, uh, customer base, and they built an amazing native Blazor report viewer, which is utilizing our UI for Blazor control library to sort of to bring that champagne back into the reporting solution. And we've been increasing the features of that every single release, and I'm, I'm happy to say we have some new great features for that. Um, infinite scrolling was a big one, so you can just sort of use your mouse wheel to scroll down for in the report for whether it be one page or a thousand pages, you know, to click any uh, next page or, or page forward or page back buttons. Uh, that's going to make it a lot easier to look through your reports. And that was a feature we had in some of our other report viewers too. So it's good that, you know, that made it into the native one as well. Um, Built-in content searching. If you do have a longer report, you don't know exactly where your data is that you want to find. You can uh, hit the, the search box and easily um, find out uh, what you're looking for. And we added some back and forth navigation with the drill down, drill through um, reporting in, in the for reports. Uh, we'll get a bit, a bit into the weeds uh, more when I can demo it and show what that means. But just basically, when you drill from one report down to another report and then down to another report, you can navigate back quite easily. Um, and I think the last big one we added was tooltip support, which a lot of our charts have uh, sort of built in tooltips that you can see for some of the data points. And now that is passed all the way through to the report viewer on the front end and allows you to um, you know, sort of hover over certain elements of the report, get tooltips and, and see what's going on. And on the back end, we have continued improvements on the client side API. Oh, and one more big thing we added was that now this report viewer as well is available as an item template in Visual Studio. So that just makes it much easier to bring into your board. No, no code to control paste, um, copy in. So you can just sort of uh, add new report viewer and yeah, that's done. And Rick, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, you got .NET 7 support in there too. We do, we do. So .NET 7 support is something we've been working on for, um, for a while. I think we had it in a preview in the last release, but yeah, we have official .NET 7 support in reporting for Windows. Um, some of our uh, long-term customers who are utilizing um, Linux will know that uh, Reptelic reporting is built on uh, GDI Plus, which um, support ended for uh, on, in .NET 7 under Linux. So we are doing some magic on the back end to um, enable different renderings um, uh, to replace the GDI or, or, or lived GDI Plus and Linux is what that library is. Um, and then we will have full Windows and Linux.NET support, hopefully soon. Um, as of today, full.NET support uh, for a Windows machine. Very cool, very cool. Um, I'm, I'm seeing uh, there are a couple of questions uh, popping up. Uh, you know, folks are comparing some of the other libraries that we have with you know other libraries. You know, we, we don't talk about other people's things, uh, so you know. <laughs> For every you know UI product suite and reporting and testing, you know uh, we like to stand on the shoulders of our engineers and, and what we have put together. So you know what we always say: it's just always the right tools for the right job. You know, make sure the UI and the tools that you're using uh, fits what you're doing. You're comfortable with the documentation. You're comfortable with the de developer experience, and you can trust the folks who are you know 
uh, standing by you uh, for support or whatever else that you might need. It all sounds very impressive. Very well said, Sam. Uh, I know what we want to do right now is take a quick uh, shoot over to the roaming camera. Ooh, is there anything else you. that you wanted to share? I know you're hopping on a plane uh, to head back to Boston, but is there any other findings or key points you want to share with the audience tonight? Uh, we have a couple a uh, couple more things I can mention quickly. If, uh, you can bear with me for another couple of minutes. Um, okay. So we always try and move the library forward, both in you know big ways and in little ways. And I think one of the one of the nice things that got added, um, which as a you know as a programmer, I am definitely going to be start utilizing, is um, some enhanced conditional logic branching in our expression syntax. So what that basically means is we added a switch, which if you have to do any more than two or three conditions, makes it much, much easier when you're uh, writing your reports. I personally have some reports. Uh, everyone, I think, knows that I do some interesting reports for our webinars where there is some not pretty uh, conditional logic uh, built in. If, if this if else nested you know 30 or 40 times uh the switch statements um, built in will make that much uh much easier um to to massage to look the way you want um and lots of little little fit and function and trim you know pieces added i mean there's a uh, sort of a death by a thousand paper cuts uh, uh, way that which they increase the the performance and the the um features in reporting i don't think i'll be able to get into each and every little one but uh, leave it to be said, we had a lot of great stuff that came out this release. What's nice is that you're going to be able to deep dive into these things into the upcoming webinar, right, at the beginning of February? For as much time as Sam is willing to give me, I will I will be going through the what came out, yes. Perfect. So everyone will have a chance to really see what he's talking about. You'll be able to see the bits in action. Like you said, they're uh, just been dropped, so everything is uh, fresh out of the gate, but there's a lot of good things coming your way. Okay. Rick, well, thanks for joining us. And if you can stick around for a little bit, uh, we're going to go over to our, I'm going to call it live commercial break. You guys get to see a little bit of the Sophia office. Um, and then we'll be back. We'll be talking about Fiddler Everywhere. Um, and then we'll move on to some of the other products. Hey, hello. Hi. Are we live? Can you hear us? Live. Awesome. Hello and welcome from the Sophia Bulgaria office. I am so excited to bring in some of the team today and uh, maybe talk about some favorite features. So I, I love that I'm the commercial break. Uh, Lisa and I will hear from the Kendo UI Angular team, but I've got some amazing, some amazing peeps. Say hi, everybody. Hello. Okay, so let's go meet them. Let's go see who's who and what's what. Also, there's mountains. I don't know if you can see them on the chat, but there are mountains. So hello, good sir. What is your name? Hello. Can you introduce yourself to the chat? I'm Ivan Christoph, and uh, I'm engineering manager of the Plotting team. Very cool. Okay, so what's your niche of engineering? Like, do you have a specific like programming language or product that you work on? I work on the reporting product, uh, the Lyric reporting mm -hmm. and the Lyric report server, mm -hmm. and uh, I usually use uh, C sharp and uh, TypeScript. Nice. And I also hate JavaScript. Oh, you hate JavaScript? Okay. I'm going to recruit you because I have a channel called okay. JavaScript Girl in a .NET world where I'm like awesome. learning .NET. So I feel like you'd be a really good person, you know, someone oh, to learn from. Yeah. <laughs> I, I feel like it'd be a really good perspective. Do you have a favorite part of this release? Uh, actually, yes. You do? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we released this really cool feature named uh, Shared Data Sources. Hmm. And it's without going into details, uh, it allows people to share the data, the places where the data comes from. Yeah. And it's something that uh, our users have requested in the past, so okay. now we deliver. That's awesome. Thank you so much for chatting with me. A have, have a beautiful evening in this mountainous area. And yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Amazing. All right, next up on the beanbag. I think this is a beanbag. I think that's I a beanbag. So, yeah. yeah, I'm going to beanbag next to you. Is it, you're saying it's supposed to be? Is it? Does it count? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. She's comfy. Um, can you introduce yourself to the chat? So, yeah. I actually, I'm another Ivan. Uh, I'm Ivan Poroshev. But I just started in the company uh, this Monday. What? So, yeah. I'm the new product manager for uh, Kendo. Okay. Well, hi, Alyssa. Hi. Good to meet you. Good to meet you, too. <laughs> I am so excited to get to work with you. So, yeah. Uh, me as well, but yeah, I'm just reading through the notes, so yeah. I can't quite say. Uh, That's totally fine. But do you have a favorite as far as like 
programming language or anything from from that perspective, technology wise? Jeez, well, <laughs> I caught it back in the day, so it's I, I caught it in uh, .NET. I mean C sharp mm -hmm. in particular, but yeah. Do you I also it hate? Java. JavaScript? I haven't touched JavaScript, to be honest. Okay, all right. So, well, so we've got a, a I'm, no I'm opinion starting. here, one starting. hate. We're going to, we're just like yeah. moving down the line. Yeah. <laughs> he's, the, he's demotivating me, too. Oh, okay, okay. I'm starting. <laughs> yeah, so. Well, welcome to the team. So excited to have you Thank and you. great meeting you for the first time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Woo. All right. Next up. Hi. 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 Can you introduce yourself? Yeah, my name is Emil. Uh, I'm part of the uh, Kindle teams. Nice. And do you have a favorite like language or product? Uh, do you uh, also hate JavaScript? No, I don't. <laughs> I actually like it. So wow. maybe he doesn't like me anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. No, I, I, I love both. I love JavaScript and .NET. So I want you all to know it's okay to love both. But uh, well, oh, do you have uh, anything uh, from this release that like comes to mind as exciting or a favorite for you? Um, favorite, I wouldn't say, but I, I think uh, all the things that we release are exciting, so mm. I, I just can't pick a favorite. No, I, I respect that. Thanks for coming on, man, and have a wonderful evening. Thank, Thank you, you for taking some time to talk to us. All right, last on this side of the room, don't worry, there's more. <laughs> Introduce yourself, please. Okay, so I'm going to be Ivan Third. I'm in the third! I love it. Oh, my, okay. And yeah. your opinions, just like before we even find out, what you do here at Progress? What do I you do? like? Yeah, before we find out, okay. do you like JavaScript? I mean, sure. I, I got it. I, I... <laughs> it's, 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 it's a language like like any other. Oh, so, that's beautiful. Yeah. I, I love that. So I what... can use it. Like I, I have nothing against it. I have against people who don't know how to use it. But hmm. like, that's another story. Okay, so I like it. And what team are you on? <laughs> uh... <laughs> So my team is called Technical Guidance, but I used to be part of the Can Do AI teams. Mm. And then the, what I mean, the teams team, and previously the Can Do AI team, mm. and then previously the Ajax teams. So does Technical Guidance work with a ton of different like teams and ton of different products? Yeah. Okay, yeah, we do. We okay, do. very cool. So I don't adhere to any specific release. Like we help. Everybody. Wherever help is needed. That sounds very overwhelming. So <laughs> I can't really say I have something <laughs> favorite in that. Yeah. Mean I. I discriminate, so I like it. Oh, well, thank you for taking some time. I the third, the <laughs> third. Have a wonderful evening, and thank you, everybody, on this side of the room. Mwah! You're beautiful. Thank you for the hard work. I really appreciate, and I know our, our customers do too. So, thank you for everything you do. All right, I'm gonna hand it back to the room, the other room, the the bigger room for a minute, while I go, or maybe not. Maybe they're not ready for that. I'm gonna. I'm, I'm walking. This is. <laughs> We are always ready for you. Oh, listen, <laughs> that was amazing. I'm here to inform you, both of you are on mute. <laughs> Alyssa, you're on mute. We can't hear you. <laughs> we can't hear you, Alyssa. <laughs> she goes. <laughs> on that note, hello, Catherine. Hey, how's it going? Good, good, good. Um, so maybe we uh, bring back our um, other room where everyone is. Uh, Eve, if you're uh, ready, we'll bring you back on. There yeah. you go. And I'm Rosen. We're ready. I'm here with Rosen, and we can hear we can hear Alyssa because she's only in like a room around the corner, so I can hear her hmm. in this room. But I know the audience couldn't hear. Her, but I know she'll be going to um, a next round of people and learning a little bit more about what they do uh, here at Progress. It's interesting to get their take on JavaScript. Uh, but what I want to do here today is I have uh, Simona in the back as well. She can come onto stage uh, if we can let her in. Uh, but here's Rosen. You might remember Rosen. His last uh, big debut was in Boston at <laughs> yeah. August 360. I, <laughs> I know that was in, what, was that September, Rosen? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. my timeline. 
Um, and then Simona, she's driving or joining us remotely today. Uh, so both Rosen and Simona are on the Fiddler uh, product team. And along with R1 release, we released Fiddler 4.0. And we're just going to give you a couple of the big highlights like we're today. And then we can uh, move on to Alyssa and the roaming, cam or roaming camera. Um, but I'll so start with you, before we, I'm sure. I was going to say, before we get into Fiddler, just a you know, a fun note. So I was at a conference last week. And um, I am talking about Fiddler. I mean, I'm standing on your shoulders, you know, uh, trying to spread the love. It was a big room of uh, maybe about, you know, 200 people. And uh, this is the impact like Fiddler has had, you know, over the years, like so many devs uh, or QA people, uh, support people. We have kind of grown up with Fiddler. So I'm trying to, you know, showcase Fiddler. And I just asked the room, like, how many of you have ever used Fiddler or, you know, have used it, you know, for five, 10 years? It was 95% of the room, like the hands went up. Like that's how much uh, Fiddler is used and loved. So thank you for what you do. Well, that's awesome to hear. And thanks for sharing that. Um, yeah, we're all about, you know, spreading the Fiddler love. Um, and that's why it's a big part of it to be um, part of the overall release. And I know one of the big features that um, either you or someone are going to talk about today was the advanced filters, right? Is that one of the bigger ones that came out in this release? Yeah. I can I can take that when you when you say Fiddler Everywhere 4.0, uh, the first thing I think about is the, the new filters, the improved filtering experience uh, as a whole. So um, uh, previously we had uh, an, a so-called advanced filters and column filters, and uh, previously they were kind of separate. It was a little bit confusing for for the users. So. Uh, yeah, with the with the latest version, they're actually much more in sync. They're grouped, and anything that you uh, apply on any of the approaches is is applied across uh, to the other one. So you now have uh, you can you can choose uh, how to approach that. You can uh, go to um, the column filters uh, if you have a very specific uh, condition that you uh, that you want to use in order to narrow down traffic. Um, and if you want to apply more co uh, more complex complex filtering, more than one condition, uh, you have a, a, a very direct way to to open our filter editors, uh, and you can uh, apply as many con conditions as you want. Um, we you will also notice uh, that we have new checkboxes next to each uh, condition that you add. So those are um, I believe those are helpful. For example, if you have if you spend some time building on your uh, match condition, but then you want to play with the match condition, play with the filter uh, criteria, uh, you don't have to delete the whole row that you were just spending some time to uh, to set up. You can just use the checkboxes, uncheck or check that one. And it's much more easier, I believe, to, to use the filters and to, to play with uh, narrowing down the traffic. And a highly, um, yeah, a long-awaited uh, option as well is uh, the stay filter uh, option that we also introduced with the latest uh, release. So yeah, you can uh, set up your your filter. You can put a name on it and uh, click on save. And next time you want to. For example, if uh, you know that every time you open Fiddler Everywhere, there's a certain filter that you want to apply, you can just go to your list of uh, saved ones and click on that, and it will be automatically applied. So uh, yeah, that's another another benefit that we added to Fiddler Everywhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that, is, that is very cool. So I, I have a quick question. And, and sorry, Eve, you were going to say something. I was going to mention, like, with the save filters, along with uh, the saving of requests and save sessions, uh, the productivity gains have really taken part in the last, you know, one or two releases. Um, so it's happy. I'm happy to see that as well. Yeah. So I, I was asked this question because, like, w when we, you know, keep Fiddler running, it's, you know, embarrassing how much it captures. Like, it's every network thing. And our ways to filter down what we want to see, like, that's the true power. And you know, as we are going through our workflows, you may want to set up, you know, these, you know, custom filters, which are very specific. And, and the real power is when we can save things up. So let's say if Eve and me are working together on a product, can I save my filters so Eve can, you know, reload them up uh, herself? Not yet, but uh, this is something that we have on our roadmap and to yeah, probably- That'll be very sweet. Yeah. First, we wanted to, to get more feedback about the safe tutors. And if you remember in our session in September, I promised that we'll have these safe tutors. So now, finally, we have now them. Now it's here. 
Yeah. And uh, Sam, no. that was a very, very good point that you made. We were actually uh, trying to improve this whole uh, capturing and filtering on uh, traffic uh, experience. And we have actually uh, some new upcoming stuff that will even ease that up. So definitely um, stay tuned, everyone, to, uh, for, the, for the upcoming release to uh, get an even, uh, even enhanced experience on that part. Yeah, no pressure. We just like putting you on the spot and, you know, giving you more things to do on the road. We are prepared. And, <laughs> and another thing that is, you know, super uh, important for productivity, like I find is like the rules. You know, I would set up all of these, you know, very custom rules and then I can turn them on and off. Um, are we um, going towards a place where rules can be saved and shared? Well, actually, you can um, now save and share your rules, but... Um, we know that it's not the best experience. I'm sure that even you have not found it yet. So we are currently revamping all of our rules. And in one of our future releases, we will allow you to group them in sections. We'll have some additional functionalities like uh, predefined rules and also the ability to share all of those groups with the rest of the team to just to give them the knowledge that you have uh, gained through, through those rules. For example, one of the common rules that we, we often share in our team is uh, something that can check for uh, your password if it's in some of the requests. Because you know that you want to protect yourself, you want to see if uh, something is, uh, is out there. And this is something that you can build and later share with others just by putting, uh, and everyone will just have to put their own password that they want to check and monitor the traffic. I'm sure you will find some interesting tools out there that are uh, actually working with your password. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. And so, some, and oops, Hansi, I'm real quick. We're going to have some more things to share on Fiddler. We're going to cut over real quick uh, to see what's happening in the other break room on floor seven. And then we'll be right back. I love we are calling oh, Alyssa yeah. like the commercial. I know. <laughs> so, Alyssa, <laughs> take, take it away. Like, no, I mean, she's, she's, still, she's still talking. Uh, is she ready? Alyssa, you ready? Yep, she is ready. Hello. Can Hello. you hear me? Yes. Awesome. Hello again. Apologies. Technology's just, she's just not my friend today, but I'm so excited to introduce the other half of the room, the office. I'm going to do a, like a swing around. Say hi. Uh, so yes, let's meet. What is your name? Hello. What team are you on? I'm Joanna. Uh, I'm part of uh... Blazer, React, and Vue teams. So oh, I'm good managing crew. And so are you an engineer? Yeah, I have background as an engineer, okay. as quality assurance engineer. So well, I've been checking the release. So you mentioned Blazor, and we've been asking, you know, people's opinions on JavaScript. I'm assuming you don't I love, love it. Because... I, I love it, actually. Oh, you really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. that warms my heart. That uh, warms my heart. Yeah, but, but you should go uh, the other around, part around the room and find out opinions. Room, yeah. Do you have anything that sticks out as special during this release that you're like, go look at this feature or go look at this component? Anything? Yeah. We, we, had, we released so many things, but uh, yeah, my personal favorite one is uh, the compact grid or mm -hmm. the sizing options of the grid. It's mm -hmm. uh, great for showing uh, uh, financial data. So it's amazing feature. It's available in Angular, React, Vue, Blazor. Uh, so go check out all, the all around grid everywhere. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. It's amazing. Well, yeah. thank you for taking time this evening to talk to us. I appreciate you so much for oh, all the work you do. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Next up. Bum, 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 bum. Hi. Hi. <laughs> so tell me, what's your name? What team are you on? Uh, and your thoughts on JavaScript in general? <laughs> I'm Christian, and I'm from from the Blazor team, okay. and uh, let's say I don't hate JavaScript. You don't? <laughs> no, but I prefer to work with uh, C Sharp. Okay, okay. Yeah, and about this release, uh, I was more into accessibility. That was my favorite part. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Oh, that's really cool. I honestly... There are I other love... big parts, but mm. yeah, this one was my favorite. I, I love how our team, like all the teams actually, are very passionate and like make sure that like before that beta tag is removed it meets all the accessibility specs and so i love that yeah, that's really it cool it's really important well mm -hmm. thank you so much for hopping on any other words of wisdom anything you want to <laughs> <laughs> that's the... <laughs> that's... well thank you so much for your time thank you <laughs> Ooh, it's like a 180 spin hi hi, everyone. hi so 
name, what you do, JavaScript bots? Yeah, my name is uh, my name is Radko Stanev. Um, I'm um, I'm a software engineer uh, in the Blazor team. Um, I've recently uh, taken the, the the role of team lead as well. Um, I love JavaScript. Okay. I love okay. C sharp. Now we're talking about Java. Uh, that's a different story. But... Wait, we we don't love Java. We have. <laughs> let's yeah. Let's, <laughs> I I wouldn't say hate, but yeah. <laughs> Well, that's I, I also will be stealing you for my my stream so that you can teach me some .NET from a JavaScript perspective since right, you okay. seem to know both, you know? Okay. Uh, so favorite part, anything special that ha like from this release? Uh, there are tons of great stuff, really. Uh, the compact grid is definitely one of them, uh, mm -hmm. the accessibility improvements. But uh, uh, if I have to name one, yes. I'd say probably the uh, adaptive mode of all selects and pickers, mm. like uh, a nice sleek layout yes. for, let's say, mobile devices. Mm -hmm. Looks great. That's awesome. Thank you so no worries, much for no taking worries. time and for You're all welcome. your hard work. Thank you. All right, last one, and then I'll pass it back to the big room. Okay. Hello. Hey, how are you? Hello. Name, what do you do? Uh, I'm Peter. I'm uh, part of the React and Vue team. Okay. Yeah. Okay. React and Vue. I gotcha. I'm with you. Yeah. I mean, I'm Angular. So I'm I'm just okay. We, with we you. like you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Uh, do you hate JavaScript? I love JavaScript. Okay. Do you like .NET? Maybe maybe I can. I, I if I should be politically correct. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't like that much uh, C sharp and <laughs> .NET. The .NET X system. So, yeah. Um. Okay. One last question. What are your thoughts on TypeScript? It's great. It's great. I, I, okay, yeah. okay. 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 Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm like Catherine. If you're I'm not watching. Against, I'm not against Microsoft. I'm uh, like. <laughs> <laughs> well, Catherine and I were having this discussion because she's from React and I'm from Angular, and Angular has widely accepted TypeScript. Mm -hmm. Like that's just what we do now. We yeah. don't JavaScript anymore. We TypeScript. And she was saying how she hasn't quite gotten on that boat yet. And I'm like, hey, look, you're in React I you and it, TypeScript. You can you can love it all. So. I think it's it's nice to have it. And okay. yeah, I like it. Anything special from the release that you'd like to uh, mention? My opinion is the PDF viewer. Oh. Yeah, yeah. It's something that a lot of people wanted. And mm. now it's available. And I believe that yeah, it will, uh, everyone will be excited. I honestly love how much every team actually takes feedback of like, customers and developers yeah. and they're like yeah this they wouldn't stop asking for it so we gave it to them like i love that it was it had a lot of requests so yeah <laughs> now it's it's live so everyone can uh, test it that's awesome pdf viewer go check it out yeah, yeah i'm talking to you okay <laughs> well thank you for your time everybody you. i'm gonna wave goodbye to all of you as i do a very amazing exit but have a wonderful evening you're all beautiful thank you for your thank work you. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, hello. Hi. I love how many friends you've made. So well, mind you that Alyssa's only been here a couple hours. I think she's <laughs> met an entire floor and the night is so long. <laughs> I was going to say, we can find more people. We I know we will. It. I'm not worried about that whatsoever. But I love how everyone is being so open and sharing with you um, their thoughts, their favorite points from the releases. I thought at one point you might get the Heisman from one, but you recovered quickly. Um, found some common ground, so that was awesome to see. Now, Alyssa, would you dare go out to the balcony and the and the roof on sixth and seventh floors? You sure? Oh yeah, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm headed there now. Let me if I can figure out how to. Yeah, I found the door. I and can, we can come back to you. Oh, there you go. Now you're out. Yeah. Oh yeah. Can I? Can I? All right. We're gonna go. We're gonna. We're gonna get, try. I'm gonna mute myself so we don't pick up. Hello. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna break the fourth wall. Are you ready? And I'm happy to see, I know in the chat, lots of questions are coming up. Um, we'll try to get to them, you know, later on if we can. Right now it's a little hard with the roaming and uh, some of their questions are uh, more extensive, you know, than what we have the time for right now, but we will not let anything go unanswered. I, I do have one burning question to ask. Oh, gosh. And it is yeah. right uh, behind Rosen is our big sign for DevReach. And I think somebody might need a little rescue. Like, I, I feel like somebody is trapped behind that. Or Wait, maybe, you know, intentionally hiding. Now a little bit. See, a little... Oh, oh, there you go. There you go. Maybe somebody <laughs> needs a rescue. I see a hand. But she like, seems like stuck there forever. Good eye, Sam. <laughs> I mean, it was strategic oh, placement. That's our behind uh, the scenes strategic place, hair right. makeup. Uh, I see. Like it, it's literally behind the scenes, like <laughs> hiding. 
<laughs> oh, that's our good friend Cindy, yeah. by the way. All right. Um, so, yeah. real quick, and um, Rose and I know there were a couple of things that you wanted to share with us today. If I know, I'll kind of take Alyssa's. You know, what do you do here? Uh, what's your name? What's your part fiddler? Maybe what's your zodiac sign? I don't know. Whatever you want to share with me. <laughs> Let's don't go, don't go to the zodiac okay, sign, too, please. Too far. Okay. Uh, yeah. Too much. Too soon. Uh, yeah. So. I'm sure you all know from the September wife and from this wife that I'm Rosen and I'm leading the Fedor engineering team. What I wanted to share is one, because some mentioned the productivity, and this is something that I found quite useful. Uh, something else that we have released in the last month. Um, it is the ability to copy uh, the sessions that you, you see in Fedor everywhere, to copy them as your request, for example, as Fetch or as Curl or, or PowerShell script. So I've used it a lot because uh, I love to capture traffic with Fedor. I uh, love to take a deep look how other applications are working, and Fedor is helping me in this case. And whenever I have to write my own script, I, it takes a lot of time because, yeah, I, I know how to write JavaScript, or at least I knew in the past, and I try to do it. And every time when I try to request, it is just failing. And that's when I just use the right click in Fedor everywhere, just copy as fetch and put it in my code, and it's actually working. And it's this simple. You need around two seconds to do it, not like two hours in my case in other situations. But yeah, uh, this is the, the cool feature that I, I love from this release, uh, apart from what Simon already mentioned. But there are a couple of um, new items that we are currently working on and that will be live soon. Um, maybe Simon can share some of the items that we are working on and that will be live and when will they be live? Yeah, um, uh, yeah. Our team is uh, constantly trying to to improve everything. We listen to your feedback. Uh, we try to address that uh, as soon as possible. Uh, but yeah, as uh, Rosen mentioned, uh, we do have uh, a new release uh, coming up. Uh, it will be live by the end of the month for sure. Uh, and uh, one of the things that um, I'm excited about is uh, the new quick search option, or should I say the totally revamped uh, search option. Um, it's uh, the quick search will um, have an improved functionality. It, uh, once you enter uh, a keyword, uh, it will be looking for content through all of the columns in the live traffic grid. Uh, and it will have a, a, a highlighting. So that means you will uh, have a clear view of uh, where that content is. Uh, and which session you might be looking for, or you might be uh, you might uh, want to work with. Uh, so it will, uh, yeah, it will uh, have highlights. Um, the search will also be looking at content um, in um, uh, hidden columns, which means that even if you're if there is uh, a match in a in a, col a column that is not visible currently, you will have an indication for that. And with uh, with just a click, you'll be able to reveal the um, the, the hidden columns that uh, your match uh, could be contained in. So yeah, that's definitely one of one of the things I am excited about for everyone to try out. I think Korea, you mentioned that there is something for spam <laughs> the next release. Can you share more, more about it? Uh, yeah, actually, uh, in that uh, productivity, uh, improving filtering, capturing uh, direction, as you uh, might remember, we did a release uh, a bypass uh, functionality that allows you to bypass specific domains. And now with the new filtering uh, experience, the quick search that's coming up, uh, in the, along that uh, we'll have uh, a new option to limit uh, sessions that are visible in the live traffic grid when capturing. So that means that uh, you'll be able to specify a specific um, a number of uh, sessions that you want to be visible at once in the live traffic grid. So for example, you can just put 20 and uh, you'll have just uh, 20 requests in the live traffic grid uh, visible. Um, you have, uh, you'll be able to just have Fiddler everywhere running on the background and whenever uh, instead of the whole application filling up with all of those requests uh, and sessions, um, you, when you, let's say, experience an issue, uh, you'll be able to open the application, see the last 20 requests, for example, and uh, qu quickly grow, uh, go through those and uh, 
yeah, just an increased productivity for sure. Um, and I believe a more uh, like a smoother work with the application, better UI. Um, and yeah, that's the other thing I can definitely uh, see it being useful uh, in the next release. That's exciting. And I know you could go on and on. Um, and February 2nd, you're going to be on uh, doing the webinar at 11 o'clock Eastern time. And you're going to be showing all the things for 4.0. And yeah. like, Simone is pretty good at giving a sneak peek into 4.1 and the next release after that. So definitely be some good tidbits. And Simone, I'm sorry, I tagged you in really fast, but I didn't give you a chance to tell uh, the audience who you are, what you do here, and maybe what's most intriguing about your job. Yeah, well, I, uh, I'm i the product manager for, for the Fiddler family. So um, my job, I guess, is to uh, take users feedback, uh, work with multiple teams, try to address that feedback in the best possible way in the application to improve the experience for for everyone using Fiddler everywhere. And um, yeah, that's, uh, that's in short. Um, so I think this is my second appear in the Twitch session. So yeah, really uh, exciting so uh, to talk really. Essentially you know. what Simona means is like, she's the mom of the Fiddler family and she's herding cats. <laughs> <laughs> they're definitely both rock stars so i'm excited to have the, you know be with them here in person um, and bring you the latest bits for fiddler and what's coming out and who's up next sam do you remember who's up um, uh, we're missing ed here because uh, ed and me cover all of the .NET stuff no. so maybe uh, Alyssa, if you're ready then you can go and then i can cover some some of the .NET, you know high level product yeah, no, absolutely. I think. Sorry about that. We had some feedback. So I think I'm going to go ahead and bring on Catherine, if you're ready, my love. And I'll let you all sign off real quick uh, from this session. Um, and then we'll move on to some Kendo UI tidbits and see how much time we have at the end for any other Telerik or .NET bits. Okay, so before I sign off, uh, I have to go uh, run and catch a plane as well. But um, folks, next week, um, we are going to do all things .NET uh, uh, for our webinar. That's going to be Ed and me covering all of the .NET uh, updates across uh, all things ASP.NET, uh, you know, Ajax and MVC, uh, Razor Pages, and all things Blazor, of course. And then I come in and talk about all of the mobile and desktop things. So that's everything from you know WPF, WinForms, uh, you know, WinUI, uh, UWP, and of course, is Amrit and Dr. Maui. So we have a lot to unpack and uh, that's coming up next week. Sounds good. Well, from the Fiddler team, we're gonna sign off, but it was great talking with everyone. Uh, if we can figure out how to do what Alyssa does, maybe we can roam around to a couple other floors, but I think that's a special skill. Rosen, are you up for it? Uh, no, not really yet, <laughs> but I, I can try something. Okay, we'll see what we can do. Let's see, we talked about some, maybe some round offs, I'm not sure, but that might be a little, <laughs> a little aggressive for today. But thank you to everyone for listening Thanks. to we're about recording and builder, and we'll see you on February second. Thank you all. Bye -bye. I'll off as well. Thank you. See you Bye. soon. All right. Hey there. Hi. <laughs> I said hello and realized I was still on mute. How are you doing? Oh, yeah, that's been my whole day. Like whole day. Yeah. So. <laughs> To be fair, you did <laughs> literally just step off a plane. So I think we'll Sarah came on. Sarah came running into the room like this. And she was like, You're <laughs> muted. And I was like, Oh, I'll stop talking now. So it was great. It was the first time I'd met many of our engineering team and I felt real smooth. I was like, I, I know technology. Deeply jealous that you guys are really smooth. <laughs> I have not yet I'm met the team. Next, next Sophia trip. So I, I, I like honestly, I keep meeting all these engineers that aren't angular and i'm like gosh darn it where are my people so i'm gonna find them so i haven't yet met my team but i've met <laughs> your team so if that <laughs> yeah, that counts that's I, halfway there at least you're in the javascript zone and when you talk to people they'll be like yeah javascript we love javascript <laughs> we're like you know we know JavaScript. kevin it was you right i didn't misquote you about typescript it was oh, you. No, that was correct. That was, okay, that was cool. me. That was I was like, like, I got this moment. I should probably like, learn that. Huh? Okay. No. <laughs> um, there was a question in the chat about Maui. If it's a, I know it was directed at Sam before Sam ran off and got on a plane. Rude. I know. Um, yeah. is, it, is it a library or a framework and why is it the best? So I, I'm going to just 
I'm going to level with you. I think that's Fuel just teasing us because he also oh, he knows. He dropped his React library framework. <laughs> Yeah. See, you what's the difference between TypeScript? TypeScript and C sharp? <laughs> okay. Thank you for cluing me in. I was just now reading. Dang it, fuel got me again. Fuel. Okay. So, yeah. Question, Catherine. Angular got this thing <laughs> called the Compact Grid. Did you? Did ooh. you get? Did you get a I Compact didn't, Grid? I think we already. Ooh. Oh, it's one of those we already have. I kind of think we have it. I, I'm gonna level with you that I don't remember <laughs> let, me, let me i want to like actually share a screen so is it is it the data grid or is it the pivot grid it's different it's well okay so this is my, it's a whole like, new grid it's, it's oh, right, right, right right so i don't know if it's a whole new grid or if it's just an enhancement because like the way the docs yeah. were written it looked like it was an enhancement yeah. on the grid to be compact in certain situations right. in which one would need a compact grid so yeah but, oh no, we did. Honestly, we like, got the was, compact grid. I had okay, a cool, cool. Was, yeah. That's why I was like making sure. I was like, we did, but it is an adjustment to our data grids that it now has a compact rendering mode. I was making sure those are the same things across the libraries, and they sounds like they are. Okay. <laughs> so. Okay. Um. So, do you have anything other than compact grid that you're excited about for React? That. Oh yeah, we got two new components. It's we're kind of at the point where like we have a really robust. We've got like well over a hundred components. I was so gonna say a lot what, of our the numbers like one oh the numbers super high. Yeah. A lot of our releases now are updates, uh, like either quality of life updates, feature updates, stuff like the compact grid that makes the components that we have more robust. So mm. when we get like a totally brand new component, I kind of love it. And we got two. <laughs> what, are, okay, so, what are they? What are the two new ones? What are we they? got the action sheet, which is nice. It's mm. kind of like, um, it's mostly made for like mobile development. So you get that little like uh, menu that pops up from the bottom uh, that can give you some options. Oh, I, yeah. I, so I, I, have, I have it pulled up for Angular, but I think, oh, I here. think she's um, similar. Oh, you got it? I got it. Give okay. me. One I was moment like, to just share my it's... screen. Ah, you weren't liking just like my gestures, my handsome ones. <laughs> yeah. No, I just I was like, I have this tab open. You always have the exact like doc or whatever the thing is like pulled up and ready to go. So I was trying yeah. to like, emu emulate you where I was like, oh yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, this so, is called the action, action sheet. sheet. Action sheet. Yeah. yeah. So basically you can set a button pretty much anywhere and it will trigger this little menu that comes up from the bottom of the page, which is really nice. Um, just really handy. And it's, you know, for especially for thumbs. things. <laughs> yeah. Well, right. Like it makes a lot of sense from a UX perspective and it's good for kind of those secondary actions. Like if you have a file that you're going to like save or print or like mm. share those kind of mm. one click down things work really well for the action sheet. Mm. We also got... The PDF viewer, which I think y'all yeah, got one too. Of the, I was gonna, did we? Because I know one of the devs was mentioning it. And hang on, let me. I'm gonna pull. I'm it a level with you. I don't know at topic. all what's in the Angular release. Because <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I was like, I didn't see it. I saw it on React. So tell me what it, this is a new component that is. And they were yeah. One of the devs mentioned it was their favorite highlight. Was the PDF? It's viewer. nice. It's mm -hmm. really handy. Oh, did I see Ed just pop on? No way. <laughs> Ed, no I thought way. you were MIA. A well, Hop, maybe. <laughs> yeah. If it's if it's really you, you may join. If it's not, if it's an Ed imposter, we don't we don't take Ed imposters on this stream. If it's the Code at Live elf, just hang up. <laughs> just, <laughs> <laughs> just, just go. <laughs> so um, um before we pull Ed on, I did have like an actual question um, from Fuel, which I'm pretty sure is an actual question and not just Fuel messing with us. Uh, so we basically uh, what we've got here, you can choose either PDFJS or the uh, Telerik document processing library to handle your rendering. With the example mm -hmm. that I've built into my demo app, it's in um, Base64. So it was an easy enough task to encode a pdf and slap it in there and it worked super well um i will of course i you know me I'll, I'll dabble with my my app later and i'll show it off but i want to hand it back over to ed i just want to make sure your question was answered 
even though you're just stirring mm -hmm. again. <laughs> All right. All right. I'm going to take it as serious, serious stirring. <laughs> I'm going to answer it seriously. You use it to a question? I don't care. I'm going to use it to talk about the PDF viewer. Can't stop me. Hey, Ed, Ed, you're live. In case you didn't know, I made you live. Hello. How are you ladies doing? <laughs> so good. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing good. Alyssa, you are for the first time in Sofia, Bulgaria, I right? No. Yes. How awesome is that? It's absolutely beautiful here. And the devs are quite nice, except for that one who hates JavaScript. But <laughs> except for the one. <laughs> that one. There was just the one. one. Yeah, no. So, um, Ed, do <laughs> you have any Blazers like excitements, specialty bits that you wanted to you wanted to talk about today? Um, I have something that I'm really excited about uh, with our Blazer Repl that I want to talk about today. Are you going to show? Like, Sure. Yeah, we can it? share. We can do a little share session. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Let's see. Got to get the, the, the buttons clicking. There we go. All right. So Blazor Repl, if you're not familiar, um, is a kind of like um, for, for JavaScript users out there, this is kind of like a code pen or mm -hmm. um, JS what's, Fiddle. JS Fiddle. What's the other? Like, stack stack Blitz. Blitz. Stack Blitz. <laughs> uh, like the most popular. God, my head. Okay, yes. Yeah. So, so that type of a thing where you can come in and write some code in, in a little snippet or maybe even just kind of a somewhat complex demo and share that with the world. Uh, so you can come in. Let's go ahead and this, I'll, I'll explain the new feature that I'm using that just a sec. In. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It is code let's, for ants right now. Let's do this. Let's do this. <laughs> Display settings. Uh, let's amplify this guy up a little bit. I always forget that I, I should probably match the outgoing stream. It's going to work a lot better if I do that. And, and then I just got can... parallels on my Mac so I could run Windows, and our backgrounds look. <laughs> Same. You have a Windows machine. Why do you what? need parallel? You have a it's Windows this, machine. Why do you need parallels? It's I don't literally understand. this Why? big. <laughs> <laughs> no one can travel with such a thing. <laughs> Why would you want true. to run Windows? That is true. <laughs> <laughs> Catherine, we love all languages and frameworks here. <laughs> Speak for yourself. <laughs> I, I, we'll, we'll have another stream about my, my experience with Apple devices. But uh, oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I had another one this weekend. I it, the stream is not long enough to go into the details, so we'll we'll have to chat offline. Um, so uh, this is Blazor Repl. So we've got on the left hand side our component, which is uh, for, for those out there that maybe are in in the JavaScript world. This is uh, this is Razor, which is. Um, a templating <laughs> language in the .NET world. <laughs> yeah, that should be a show. Fuel Snable, I think, has has a good show name, and it could just be me yeah, ranting yeah. about how bad Apple devices are for hours on end. Oh, I could fill so many shows, <laughs> so many shows with this. Okay, uh, so we've got like pretty much like anything that's web standard tech you can use in Blazor, and we've got some web standard things over here with some Blazory things added on. So I've got two labels <laughs> that are data bind, <laughs> data bound uh, to each other. If I run the sample here, this is like a converter of uh, the terrible units of measure that we use here in the United States, inches to what the rest of the, literally the rest of the world uses, <laughs> centimeters on the other side. And um, if I come in here and type in like one centimeter, this is like two way data bound. So if you wanted to play with the sample, um, I can just share this out uh, yeah. and I'll get a URL to copy and I can even embed this in a blog. So if I wanted to embed this in a blog where I'm talking about two way data binding, I can mm -hmm. embed the code and the sample, and I can even configure like which windows to display and so, uh, so the on. The REPL is not new though, right? Like, the, are these the, features new? Explain what she's Yeah, doing. so the REPL is not brand new. By the way, I'm going to share this link in chat. It's going to come up yes. as Code It Live in case anybody wants to visit that URL. Uh, so this is like the experience we've had for a little while. And there, there's a lot of cool stuff in here. Uh, you can load NuGet packages. 
Uh, you can add static CSS and JavaScript links in there. Uh, we can explore the Telerik UI components and their various themes. Uh, and there's scaffolding and snippets that we can uh, put in here and, and use some more of our Telerik components and so on. There's this new tab item here and it says user snippets. And this is something I've wanted for a really long time. And the team uh, has come through in an amazing fashion. So if I click on user snippets, I'm actually gonna pin this for a second uh, because we can pin these panels as well. Um, now I can actually log in. So if I- uh, It's like the most microsoft -y thing you've ever said. What's that? <laughs> you can pin these panels. <laughs> pin the panels? Like now, like from a JavaScript world, I and like getting to know .NET, I'm like, oh, that's that's like a, that's like a .NET side of life. Is that a like, thing? It's like yeah, a, do. it's like it, a like Visual like Studio thing, thing, right? Yes, yes. Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah. this panel is new. <laughs> um, this tab is new, and this panel is all brand new, and so is this login button over here. So now there was no account associated with this before. Um, now you can get your free Telerik account. Um, if you already have a Telerik account, you've already, you've already got the account for this. Uh, but you can log in up here in the right hand side um, if you're not logged in already. Um, if you are logged in, it'll just show you that your, um, your address, email address up here. And then you should have this tab called user snippets. And now you can save and catalog all of your little oh, demo nice. items and uh, this is super handy because I have a bunch of them I need to come in here and, and add to my catalog because um, I have things like from my ebook samples from my ebook and then pretty much every time we have a release I'm in there tinkering with stuff and coming up with demos that I can share with people and then uh, you can see I've got my two-way data binding here uh, so every time you hit share you're gonna get a snippet in here um, you can filter these, by the way. You can filter them by date. Um, so that is awesome. You can filter by title. So there's there's some nice UI here as well. And then you can also name these. Uh, this is my two-way data banding one that I just kind of reshared. So I can. is very, very apt for that one. You could just just leave it. Mixoff <laughs> just gibberish. Yeah. You like the name there? Yeah. yeah it, so you get the, um, this is kind of like a GUID it generates um, oh, automatically. Oh, I didn't see that up there. Nice. Yeah, so it's it's actually the URL for it. But uh, I already have this one shared down here, so I can just go ahead and unassign that one so I don't have a duplicate. And uh, if I ever want to go back to my two-way data binding like I just did a second ago, I can just click on this one. And it'll pull it back up. So this is a brand new feature for Telerik REPL for Blazor. And it is totally awesome because now I can really make use of this um, as somebody who's constantly demoing things. And <laughs> it, one thing that's really nice about having this experience and it's part of the Telerik ecosystem is um, our support engineers uh, like this as well. So if you're running into an issue um, with one of our components, something's not working right, maybe you're trying to do a bug report, whatever it is, you can communicate with our support folks really easy with this tool rather than like maybe like sharing source code or anything like that. Uh, you don't have to worry about creating a GitHub hub repo or um, zipping up a file to send them. You can just pop open the, the REPL and put your code in there. And, and they can do the same as well. You know, maybe they have something that's going to make your life easier. Uh, they want to show you a demo. They can demo that up in here and then share it. And then now they have a catalog of it. So next time that question gets answered, whether it's in support or in our forums, they can just share that out. Uh, fuel snabble, man. That that could be maybe maybe we need to talk to uh, Chris, who's one of the engineers on this, <laughs> and uh, get a chat GPT tab. Or, or dialog box going. <laughs> you could just come up in and just type in somewhere, create a demo that does X and it just codes it out for you. That'd be, that'd be awesome. And I think I, there was a, somebody on YouTube doing that yesterday. I got a notification. I didn't get to watch the video, but they were generating blazer code with uh, chat GPT. I so don't know that what is chat a thing. GPT is. <gasps> oh, it's like, an AI? Alyssa. How long was that flight to Bulgaria, girl? 
<laughs> like this has been and the I'm hottest never... news for like a month. Where have you well, been? Yeah. She's, not, she's not on Twitter because she's happier than the rest of us. So. I'm not on Twitter either. <laughs> no, it's not. It's okay. Uh, You're on that though. You're not, You're not like offline, offline. <laughs> uh, so the chat GPT is is like an AI uh, dialogue, oh. and it does. All kinds of crazy Kara, stuff. She's amazing, and she's right here, and she knows everything. And you're being covered up by Fuel Schnabel. Oh, there you <laughs> Hi, go. Sarah. Sorry, I took it away. You I didn't used... realize you were going to show people. <laughs> Long time no see, Sarah. <laughs> she said that we used it in Thank Miss Chat GPT. Yeah, to generate the stories that we had to read. You remember? I remember the, the like, stories. I didn't know that was AI the cool generated AI stories. We were doing. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we were using it there, but it will also write code. Um, oh, when you were talking about it, I was like, it's just some .NET thing. I don't know. You know? Uh, no, it's not not even a .NET thing. Like, you can go into ChatGPT and say, like, write me a, um, I think I did I will say, though, with the a grain of salt, because I, I saw a girl on uh, TikTok who was using ChatGPT to generate um, crochet patterns. And then she would crochet whatever actually came out of it. And they were all, like, ridiculous. Misshapen, like, terrible. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. I'm, I'm like, which which ridiculous branch should we go down here? Okay, I got you. Like, yeah, I did. Not, um, so, whatever code you generate, maybe a grain of salt. <laughs> I did one um, on our uh, talk show uh, with John Bristow, uh, the mm -hmm. the uh, Eat Sleep Code show, and we were playing and around with it. it. We code? had it. Yeah, we we told it to write a random lunch, uh, an app that would uh, randomly decide lunch for us. Did and it, it? It, it did it in HTML, and it came up with like like four select boxes with random lunch items in it. It didn't so function though, right? The I mean, you could select the the select boxes, yeah, it's but it didn't really, really do what you asked for. <laughs> not quite what I asked for. But then I asked it to create the game Pong in JavaScript. And it started coding it up, and it, it like the code looked legit, but since it was a demo, um, I, I think you have to have a, a license to go beyond like so many characters. It like stopped mm. about halfway through, but I mean it was coming up with some pretty complex stuff, and it was like you know user one, user two, paddles, balls, like the whole nine yards, and then it kind of kind of stopped midway. Do you so think it, it knows about like Kendo UI? Can I be like? Make a page with a Kendo UI button. Do you think you could do it entirely think, on how much it's scraped from our docs? <laughs> yeah, it probably can because they, they've they pretty heavily scraped the web in general. So what? I wouldn't doubt it. Um, I wouldn't doubt it at all. Aww. Thank you, yeah. Overland Gamer. You're awesome. <laughs> Yeah, so, so this is this is a big one for uh, the Blazor REPL. I think people will really enjoy is that being able to do that. Is that in your blog post? Is that like linked to and talked about? Yes, it is. It is mentioned in in the overall blog post on Teller.com. So if you go to Teller.com, I think it's on this check it out up at the top. Um, do, 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 it is in the Blazor highlights here. Uh, let's Ooh. see, signature, uh, avatar component. We got our new chip component. We can run through these in a second, but I'm looking for, there it is. Tell her Grupple, save your snippets to your own nice. list of code snippets. And uh, if this is also, you know, something that you're seeing for the first time, if you go to demos and we look for any of those new items, which are always highlighted in these green mm -hmm. uh, new I guess we call these chips on the side of the fence. Uh, if we go to Avatar. What do you call it on your side of the fence, you weirdo? Uh, I think in Kendo, don't they call them something else? Or are they chips over no, there too? We got, we got chips. chips. We got oh, okay. chips up in here. We got chips, baby. <laughs> we used to call them something else. Maybe I'm thinking of Ajax. They were pills? I, I think it's no pills or something. Yes. Yeah, so uh, things, things like... The same things tend to like have names drift over the years yeah. and they, they mean the same thing, but like a new terminology will spring up and everybody kind of adopts it. Like, like everything was a widget at one point. Now it's a component. Like they're about the same wait, thing. Wait, 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 um, wait, wait, wait. Are you saying widgets and components are the same thing? Generally speaking, they're the same thing. 
There might be some yeah. nuanced differences just kind between. Of a catch-all term them. for like yeah. a little JavaScript guy, like a little JavaScript blurbo. Oh, so. I thought widgets were action script related. So this is this is news to me. So yeah, if you want to be semantic about it, like I think widgets contain are like self-contained. They have their own functionality, can exist on their own type of thing. Mm -hmm. Components belong in Wait, an ecosystem. Wait, are you saying this is but... REPL related? Because you were like talking about REPL and then you were talking about going to the chips. Yes, and this is REPL related. So like avatars, chips, they're, they're new things. If you want to check them out, um, you can look at our examples here. And some of these are interactive. You can kind of like change like the size of these items because it's showing you like some of the various properties of the new thing. Um, but if you really wanted to dig into these, you could go to any of the demos and click on edit in Telerik REPL and it will bounce you out to the editor. And then you can not only run it here, but if you wanted to come in and make changes to it, Mm. Maybe you wanted to see uh, As your Alyssa name and often does. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You wanted to see your name and lights here. You could go ahead and Did make some it. changes Did to the code, it. and hit run. You guys, and then... you guys got hot reload on your side of the fence. Yes, we do. We do have hot reload. <laughs> on your side of the you fence. should know that, Alyssa. You've done. <laughs> you, you're also she pretends no. like she's not. Pause yourself right now, sir. I got all these .NET people being like, we got hot reload. We got hot reload. We're just like JavaScript. And then I go and I try it and it's like, I have to, I have to restart that puppy every time. So I don't we know have it. I didn't that. say it works. I just said we had it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool. Well, because you just pressed the run button and I was like, wait, that's not just- Well, that's, you know. um, this is in the browser. So it takes a little bit more, um, finessing than it would if you're running a full application on your local host. Uh, local hosts would have hot reload, hopefully, unless you're doing like a major change. Changing text like I just did on, on a local machine <laughs> would have hot reload. But if I added like a new component to a view, it would probably force me to reload the app because that's technically a um, recompile. Tepid reload. <laughs> yeah. yeah, chat says that you have lukewarm or tepid reload. I love that. That makes me so happy. One day they're going to yoke me up and take away my Microsoft MVP for giving these folks such a hard time. But I'm just being honest. It it does come with uh, with some issues here and there. That's Hot reload. Not. It's a compiled yeah. language. So JavaScript's not a compiled language, but uh, .NET is. So Hot reload's harder. So I will, I will give them... Harder. I will give them uh, that it is it is a harder nut to crack and they have done their best I'm sure to make it work <laughs> but it does break down from time to time uh, you do get a lot of caching like weird caching issues uh, we, we yes. can't get into the whole ball yeah. of wax but when you're writing code in Visual Studio there's a compiler called Roslyn running in the background and it caches things that it's compiled to, to kind of speed things up and a lot of times that will you're like the hot reloading the the code ghost because i've got this like code ghost <laughs> her name is I rosalyn <laughs> or his name i don't know <laughs> rosalyn <laughs> their name yes yeah, you know their name you're like like you restart you rebuild and y your new code that you just wrote is not there and you're like oh you're just joking with me little code ghost and then you go <laughs> and start it again and it finally shows up but i guess it has a name rosalyn yes rosalyn is the name of the code yeah. ghost mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. So uh, any of these, any of these so um, chip is demos brand new here. For you or there's a feature on chip that's new for you? Uh, chips are brand new for Blazor. Uh, okay. Chips, avatars, um, the chip list. So many, many chips in a list. Um, uh, icons got revamped, I think, on all products. So yeah, we have the, font SVG and SVG. Yep. <laughs> uh, you sound like the resident expert there. Yeah, um, Catherine, can you talk about it? What's the benefits it. of, say, a SVG font over a, or sorry, F SVG icon over a font it's icon? Spoke. It's a spoke. It really just, no pressure. Uh, no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, on the spot, right? Um, one of the main things I like about font icons is that then you can scale, like you can set them um, mm. size-wise the same way you do with your actual text and scale them appropriately, which is, mm -hmm. uh, you can't do quite the same with SVG icons. So if you're setting all your text to be like, you know, whatever, rems, 
and you get that flex or if you have any kind of like a variable type system um, that's shifting automatically with your viewport or any of that font icons can be really nice there because they work like fonts <laughs> so you know about zooming how either one behaves like if you command plus do either one of them because i think fonts that grow is when you do that right so i think it's so dependent on how you've done the oh, styles is it? um oh. Because, yeah, a lot of that, it's the difference between what you've built into your app and what the browser is kind of forcing you to do, uh, <laughs> right? So, mm -hmm. again, like, even uh, fonts, if you've set them in, like, pixels versus rems versus ems, will scale differently when you zoom uh, based on, like, viewport size and other stuff. They'll adjust in different ways when you do the command plus. Um, and you think a reason you would not want to use the font icon? Um, I'm trying to think. It's really just a preference, honestly. Is there a um, quality difference when you make one of them larger? Shouldn't be. Um, like, SVGs tend to be more scalable at like super, super high. Um, I was going to say, sizes, if you're like, like designing a billboard, right? Like what? If you, that's a horse. Would you would be surprised. If you're designing for print, you want to set all of this aside. <laughs> you don't want to open a Adobe InDesign. You want to walk away <laughs> from your web dev tools. But, okay, um, okay, okay. I think they would have to be pretty darn huge for you to notice a quality difference. And icons are usually, you know, yay high. <laughs> so. one, one of the projects I worked on back in the day was a kiosk that was on a display that was over 50 inches. So you might have some really large icons on something like okay. that. Mm -hmm. My first computer had Clippy. Yeah, I mean. Your first computer had Clippy. Yeah. You didn't have you a computer. Wait, hold on. I want to rewind because my actual concern now is that you didn't have a computer before Clippy? No. Are you? What are you saying, Catherine? You called me poor? Yes. No, they were just calling you poor. I'm calling you young. <laughs> <laughs> oh. she, she took it as poor, bless her heart. Oh my gosh. No. Yeah, mine. You don't remember that you're a pre Clippy? <laughs> so you had a computer before Clippy? Yeah. We'll have to, I'll show a picture sometime. There's actually a really adorable picture, a baby picture of me on my dad's Aww. lap banging on a, <laughs> like an Apple II. <laughs> I feel like we're going to bring back the six, 640 by 480 monitors. Like, uh. I feel like, yeah. <laughs> I, I dropped the icons list in uh, chat, Did by you? the way, because we you, we yeah. have we have these documented. So if you're wondering what the uh, parameter is for these, identical for the the kind of UI for like RI. they yeah, I think are. We all got this updated in exactly the same way. <laughs> mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah, so we totally revamped all the icons. Uh, so. I'm sorry, I'm dying at people using holy cards instead of punch cards here. Holy cards. <laughs> That's um my mom the, did holy cards. He le he learned his programming in a church. That's his answer. Yeah, their his know, first computer was in a church. But... They're they're holy cards there. Holy cards not to be mixed with holy water. <laughs> Bad things happen. My my first computer interaction was with a two-tone monochrome uh green and black screen. And it had a cassette tape to load the applications. Sorry, I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing at this excellent, <laughs> excellent joke. <laughs> There's <laughs> the Venn diagram here is uh, more overlap than I thought there would be. <laughs> <laughs> Another like one of the things that is common throughout the uh, Telerik Blazor release is this new size. Um, the size was initially a parameter that was added to some of the inputs and buttons and things last release, and it's now being added to some of the larger, more complex components in this release. So you'll see size in the pager. So you can change the size of the entire pager here to be large, uh, medium, or small. Um, and then you want to go even bigger, so you think of even a more I complex say, item. We can go to uh, the grid, the data grid, and the data grid has a size option as well. 
and you can do like this ultra high density grid. So oh, it's like pretty get much compact grid too. Or did you get it? Earlier? Yes. yes. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Pause. Hold. Is this the compact grid? Yes. Yeah. So <laughs> it's a, it's eliminating about as much white space as it possibly can. Uh, before, you know, like financial institutions and things that want to have a lot of data on the screen at once, um, you can go with the compact grid. Uh, so that is an option. So you just set the parameter to small on that one, and okay. uh, you'll get this very tightly compacted um, version of the, the grid. You can kind of see them side by side here. Um, Fuel, I, I think it's honestly more common than any of us want to admit. But like, oh yeah, you were you were like, oh, financial institutions. I was like, or you Everyone. know, just some guy walking <laughs> down the street. Like, literally, everybody wants as much data on the screen as possible. <laughs> if you want to display Alyssa's My Little Pony collection, mm -hmm. um, you're gonna yeah. need you you're gonna need this, ponies, right? Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> And of course, we, you know, along with these things, we have things like column virtualization. So you have even more than that. You can just, you just keep going with the column virtualization too. Yeah. So uh, that that is one of the updates. You'll see that um, that size thing pop up in some of our other components as well. I think um, all the like the pickers got some updates in one shape another so does, we've got does laser new templates call them attributes as well Ed? so like whenever um, you have like this size attribute that you're like passing in now it's a new feature like is it called an attribute for you it's a or? parameter parameter oh, property attributes yeah <laughs> they're they're <laughs> technically <laughs> properties in blazer as well but they call them parameters because properties in c sharp have another meaning uh, yeah. But they they are essentially properties with extra metadata, so they call them parameters. Mm, spicy properties. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That would have been better. Like, that so would have been better. That would have been awesome. Like, if you write a parameter, let's no let's find naming things. <laughs> let's let's grab a demo. Where one. were you? Like, so you could have had when they were naming problems. that. <laughs> So if we go and look, does this one have any properties on it? This one doesn't have any properties either. Uh, let's see. We can do get started. Let's try that. Do we have one with just some simple properties on it? Uh, child component, maybe? Let's try that one. We'll, we'll run this. more chaos in the chat. <laughs> Always. Always. That one doesn't Always. have, have we, properties either. Have we either. hung out with Fuel in person? Is that Here. something we did? Let's close hmm. all the tabs. I don't think so. Leave okay. That one. Fuel, you're um, the one that could tell us. <laughs> yeah, you're, not, you're really you're the only one to clarify here because uh, I is confused. So I have an ebook online that has tons of good examples in it. It's still up in. Uh, we've got two Blazor ebooks, by the way, available from our Telerik.com. Here, let's do this. Telerik.com slash white. white papers. And I almost misspelled that in a very unfortunate way. Uh, let's go ahead and put that in chat as well. So there's the beginner's guide, which is my ebook. There's an, the learning Blazor ebook pre-releases um, as well. So David Pine is writing these. He works at Microsoft and it's a very lengthy ebook that is fantastic. It's like one of the, it was one of the top sellers on Amazon for, I don't know, like two or three months in a row. Um, you can get that for free because we sponsored it. So grab that for free from our white papers. There's also my uh, smaller form ebook that you can grab too. Uh, so if you're looking for another perspective on things, that's another good read. But there's examples that are all from the um, ebook in Telerik Repl here. And uh, if we Ed, do you ever, this Ed, do you ever one, print ebooks like this? Print? Yeah. Why, why would we print an ebook? Okay, I just was checking. Some some people do crazy things. <laughs> no, I'm teasing. Mean, like, some people do we... print their books and read them on say, paper. I mean, the people who get them, do they ever home print them, or do you mean do we yeah. at IRS ever? Print I know. Them? I mean, I, just like a personal home printing preference. You know, like if you're over here printing off ebooks. No, okay, that's cool. 
<laughs> I used to when um, I was little. Do you ever print out like the game guide for something really long? The walkthroughs? My parents used to hate that. <laughs> Blow through oh, the printer paper. Yeah. <laughs> We've oh, printed... I was, uh, I was the ink I ran out of. <laughs> We've printed some of our cheat sheets, which I think are also available digital yeah, on the white paper site. Sure. Yeah, yeah, I did a workshop with one, um, and we printed out a ton of them for the workshop, and but they like came out really like nice. Condensed, right? Like it's just one page. Yeah, we've got like yeah. I want to say like a flex or a grid cheat sheet? Question mark. Wait, for us or for him? I think we. A company have them collectively. Uh, we I cannot tell you like, where I live, but I have a you, very vivid memory of giving them away on stream once. I need this cheat sheet. You can <laughs> you can search. I think up here globally, but man, it'd be nice to have a search in here as well. But mm -hmm. we could do cheat sheet. We've got a couple of them: uh, Telerik just mock, Grid cheat sheet, jQuery. Um, jQuery. <laughs> functional programming with JavaScript. I have one of these for C Sharp as well. Oops, that's not. That was, that was somebody giving me feedback on it, which was great because I had a typo in it originally. Uh, oh, these, yeah, these are these are up there. Um, yeah, you can grab, sense. you can grab these. We've printed these out before. Um, they're nice to have like at your desk. Like I used to pin these up at my cubicle at the office on the little cork boards. So when I was programming, I could just glance up and like see the cheat sheets. So I love making those because I, I actually would use those all the time. Um, but yeah, there's those I've printed and we've had professionally printed uh, in mass. Um, so we were talking about parameters and uh, we can look at one of the examples here from the ebook and weather day. There's some parameters. So this is why we call them parameter. This is a property in .NET and we decorate it with a parameter with to expose attribute. it to the component. Yeah. But it would be like, <laughs> I really like, um, <laughs> okay. I really like Catherine's. Like it should be spicy. That like, that would have been so much props, better. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, why are you? You know, you need to meet Steve Sanderson and get on the design team over there yeah. uh, in Blazerland, Catherine, because yeah. th this would be a lot better. <laughs> it's shorter. Blazer team when I've never written on a blazer in my life. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> you could be on their DX team, like the developer experience here. It's like uh, parameters, like really, like a lot of typing, and uh, like my my brain is bad with like repetitive like letter patterns, it's like P A, it's got two A's that are there and two E's that are here. And I always like transpose mm -hmm. these things. So spicy is just it's so much better. Would like that, yeah. that would yeah. fix everything wrong with Blazor, Catherine, everything. Done. One so, shot. Wow. Uh, I have a hey. high hourly rate, but uh, I think we should figure something out. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It's, okay, is this a way, is if this feel saying you can like nickname it? What's that? <laughs> is this fuel's way of saying you can just nickname it? Yeah, I wonder, no? can you do that? Can Why you? are you laughing? He would never ever sow false information. Can you use a use statement? <laughs> in al can you alias I these? Knew. I didn't know you could <laughs> alias, per I know you can alias stuff. I didn't realize you could alias a, an attribute. I am oh, okay. This is just trolling. <laughs> How old were well, you in that photo when the cheat sheet post Ed get called out? <laughs> How old was I in the cheat sheet Two. post? Uh, <laughs> I, I, I didn't even see a photo of you. Maybe it was, I, I, know, didn't I didn't even notice. I didn't even notice. That was, let's see, which photo did I use for that? Um, yeah. Is it in my history? It'd be easier to find in there. I want to see the, the baby Ed photo. <laughs> Papers. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I was going to say, Fuel, I'm pretty sure someone told me that aliases are real. I don't know if they're real for parameters. Like if that, you can alias, if you can if alias. Can, spice, then well, we'll yeah, make spicy I mean, thing tonight. So. The first half of that sentence is doing a lot of lifting. That, that is an old picture. <laughs> I thought I had that changed. Oh, I thought I had that changed. <laughs> that's my, that's not my author. Enhance. Here, here. It won't. <laughs> it won't let me zoom. So let me see. I have this on disk somewhere. I bet. You know, like, you, you know why it won't let you zoom, Ed? Sure. Hang on. I'm doing this you're off on screen. An so. piece of technology. 
<laughs> just to make sure there's nothing sensitive in it's not even acknowledging this me now. folder. It's just... Can't yeah. you just like right click on the image and tell it to open a new tab? It's tiny regardless. Oh my god, Catherine. Oh, no, it's not. Okay. No, it's not it's... because she's genius. There it is. <laughs> there it is. Aww. We we didn't compress this image. Like, this is literally <laughs> the image being served. Oh, you do I'm sure that's great them. for bandwidth, <laughs> but yeah. I'm trying to remember what year this was. This was... Uh, I don't know. <laughs> the, it, guy, right? it, it, is, it is photoshopped, by the way. Like, I'm not wearing a blue undershirt. I think Were it was you white. No undershirt. Was, oh, okay. <laughs> no, there was an undershirt. I changed the color of it. I can just imagine PR being like. He I do remember color. doing that. <laughs> like when I when I cropped myself, I isolated the image. Um, I do remember changing the color of my shirt as well. Oh, I was like, you know what? I should oh, have a blue shirt on in this. I don't know. Why I just, blue? Because of your blue and orange color life scheme, right? Like a, probably that's back when it first started. Shirt. That's when, that's when the obsession started. <laughs> For those well, of you who do not know, we are at the top of our time. Is there anything else <laughs> that you guys wanted to highlight from your products? Maybe pitch from. I think the thing I that I want to make sure that everyone knows is that you can come back. Uh, I believe it's the week after next for Kendo UI. Uh, register for the webinars, I believe. Let me throw the thing mm -hmm. in the chat. You got it. It's. I'll pull it up on screen while you do that. It's um, so much fun, and we're very serious and professional. So I don't think I got it to show up. But anyway, Did not? Uh, Ed's got it. <laughs> Somewhere back here. Oh, there we go. So I pulled up the Teller one, one, by the way. <laughs> just right over your face. But no, uh, I just don't you know why you're registered for these. The Kindle UI one is on the 31st. Uh, and if you want a more in-depth look at all of the components that uh we've got it coming out um significantly more component details significantly less early 90s photos of ed so <laughs> you want to loop back around <laughs> that's good i like that <laughs> and and reserve your seat for that <laughs> so it's it's comments like that catherine that make the code at elf want to visit your show again can't um, and, you can't take it. <laughs> Ed, when is, Ed, when is yours? Is it on there? I can't um, read that. I like yeah, have so it is, it is on January 26th, um, which will be live for me from London. Ooh. I will be in London. Alyssa, you'll be there in London. Yes, uh, I'm gonna, I'll mean, i actually bomb your, 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 your webinar if you'll let me. Yeah, I, love uh, that I have to figure out where okay. this is going to happen, but yeah, you're more than welcome to awesome. jump in. Um, so I'll be, I'll be live from London. Sam will be here in the States. We will be streaming. He'll be talking about Maui, um, oh, and are desktop. Are in London? Shut oh up. My God. Shut up. Dr. Oh, Who is in London. Yeah, when Dr. We're gonna be there. Who. We got to do some hunting. Dr. If Who you, hunting. I swear to God, if you see David Tennant <laughs> and Catherine Tate, <laughs> shooting out uh, out there on the I will call, okay, I, I make this promise to you. <laughs> I will call you and like FaceTime. FaceTime. <laughs> You're like, I need to see with my own eyes. See. Yeah. <laughs> oh and my you gosh. Can steal any small items off their person, all the better. <laughs> so I, have a, I have an updated picture for this one, and Sam doesn't. This is an old picture of Sam. Oh so. my gosh. Uh, yeah. All right. Come on. Show it. <laughs> what, you want zoom? Do we need yeah. to zoom in and hand? That's as big oh, as it'll go. Oh, come on. This is, a, this is an older picture of Sam. The, look at the gelled tips. This is style. <laughs> go back like another couple months, you probably had frosted tips. I'm just saying. Oh, yeah, yeah. Probably <laughs> has to happen. But, uh, this one's fairly recent. We did this one uh, in Chicago. Oh, my gosh. Uh, I hate you that. Remember that? You remember that? Yes. Wait, you right after got, I like, gave real birth. photos taken by friends. Yeah. It was awful. We did. It was so like. Mine is a Large. selfie that I took frantically on my first day of employment. <laughs> because was... somebody said, send us a photo of you. And I said, Anytime okay. Anytime Catherine, someone everywhere. gets a hold of my like, <laughs> official headshot, I'm like, delete that. <laughs> no. Mine oh, is... No, I am so excited, though, for the so next week, Telerik webinar. Week mm -hmm. after, Kendo UI. UI. And reporting is... Do we have a reporting webinar? Are we doing it? Mm. 
I'm going to guess somewhere in between because that's the order that it's listed in the February webinar right now. Second. Is that, is that in between or is that after <laughs> all of us? That's so, after. I was wrong. Yeah, that's last. It is after. It's, it was a good guess, though. A nice it sandwich, a solid, reporting yeah. sandwich. Yeah. We next time would like a reporting sandwich of, in between. You know. Have a little jelly. Have a little jelly. <laughs> Sarah, can you please do that for the? You <laughs> should have a little jelly. Have a little jelly. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Excellent. Oh my goodness. Uh, am oh, I still thank you, Ed. There you go. There's yeah. the there's the original background to my website from that when that photo was taken. This is the same. And you photoshopped it into an orange shirt here to match your <gasps> scheme. You doing that thing. undershirt's doing a lot of lifting for you, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta buy some more shirts, buddy, so you can stop <laughs> photoshopping them. <laughs> yeah, that was that was. So uh, I'm trying to remember what year that was. This that is was a generous probably comment. <laughs> the... <laughs> Love it. I think that was um, the year before I got hired at Progress. So that'd be about eight years ago. Yeah. Uh, Global Game Jam? I don't know. I didn't know that was a thing. I don't know. Uh, is, Global I Game like Jam? It. I mean, yeah, I was going to say um, I, yeah. I, I know what the Global Game Jam you? is. So um, I actually have some friends that do that all the time. Really? Um, really? Yes. So I, I have some veteran game jammers uh, from back back in the day that I uh, know and love. Um, I wonder if they're still doing. I haven't talked to them recently. Video game streaming. Yeah. Or what's that? Is it video game streaming? Or no, it is. Talk? It is. So you get a random topic. And there's like a, a team that picks a topic. So these are my friends here. Uh, they oh, have yeah, uh, two screen. scoop games. Oh, uh, uh, I am it. not. Two scoop so uh, some friends of mine. So shameless plug for some friends. <laughs> yeah, so they, ha they, have, they have this. Uh, they have a game called Kickbot, but they I think Kickbot somewhat originated from one of these. Um, these global game jams. So there's uh, oh, it, the game it's like jam. A yeah, it's very similar Please to define hackathon. the game jam for us. <laughs> so you, <laughs> you get a topic, uh, and it could be something like um, they did one. Let's see if it's still on here. Uh, some of these are are from these game jams. See, in jam games, mm -hmm. um, one of them, this one, uprooted. Uh, the I think the the thing that they're given it's kind of like improv, right? They're they're given like certain objectives, and it was um, a on a unsuspecting weapon. I think was just that was the that was the title. Like mm. I think that's what it was. So in this one, you're a carrot. Oh, you're the carrot. And you're okay. the carrot, and uh, <laughs> you are also the weapon. So there's like rabbits like trying to eat you. People with carrots, kind of thing. Like yeah, like the pointy end of the carrot will stab the rabbits, so oh you can gosh. jump. I don't think this is like a, a very violent thing, but it's like this was oh. this is what they built for their game jam. So like you had to move the carrot by making it jump. It's really cute. Well, now yeah, they, they do game jam. <laughs> these guys are so creative. Uh, they're they're so much fun. Uh, so they come up with all these cool ideas uh, through these game jams. Well, cool. um, so you can check them out if you want to at Two Scoop Games. Um, and then, you know, there's, I, I try to remember how often game jams occur. They're, they're pretty and frequent. And have you ever gone to one? No, I haven't. Um, I haven't been able to break off the time for it there. Yeah. Uh, so here, here's a good explanation. So they're usually 48 hours sometimes a month nice. long. I just never had the time to dedicate to it. Mm. Um, yeah. It's fair. But it's a, it's a fun, you know, thing to be able to do. Yeah, I like those kind of, it's a hackathon, but it's it kind of is a little more open-ended. Like the terms aren't so strict. It's like they give you some uh ideas but it's open to creativity from there it's like nice it's not very strict prescriptions of what to do yeah cool nice 
Well, we are at the top of our time, my loves. So if there's any more pitching or special bits we wanted to talk about, now is the time. But I think I'm just I'm excited to cover the Kendo UI side, and I will definitely pop in on Ed's stream next week since I'll be in London with him. So yeah, <laughs> we need. Uh, we should probably uh, not only uh, join our webinars, but if you're in London, you can come see us at uh, NDC London. We can share some links in chat as we end time here. So NDC London, and then we're gonna be in Sweat Tug in Stockholm, uh, the, not the week after, but the following week. So um, I will find the link for that one and share yeah. that as Sorry, well. Sorry, Fuel. I've been like pretty irregular. He said that four parallel streams to watch now. Most of the weeks are zero. <laughs> as traveling's picking back up, I'm trying to find a balance to streaming and traveling. But I love you yes. and I will figure it out. There's always one of us on at least once a week. <laughs> <laughs> like Kathy yeah. on stream. <laughs> I should. We're, we're starting up React Wednesdays soon, so I'll be back on oh, before too long. Yeah. Nice. So. Yeah, so oh, Stockholm uh, Stockholm is going to be Sam, uh, Basu, uh, myself. Uh, Layla might be there as well. I'm trying to remember if Layla's there. Uh, they just released their speaker list today, uh, yesterday. Hmm. Are you going to so. Basta after that? I'll be in Basta in Germany in February. No, Sam's usually there. Yeah, we've got in Sweden, uh, Layla Porter. Uh, she's going to be there. Um, let's see, Richard Campbell, Carl Flank Franklin, Guy Royce, uh, all good friends of ours. So, yeah, if cool. you're you're in any of those areas, make sure you stop in and, and check us out. And of course, Basta, if you want to see Alyssa again. Yes. Well, who wouldn't? <laughs> yeah, sometimes I'm a little scary in person, though. So if you're used to seeing me on stream <laughs> and you run across me in person, just, you know, brace yourself. I can very, I don't know. Sometimes, like, I run at people and I'm like, hi! And they're like, oh. <laughs> just, you know. Uh -huh. Aw. Well, yeah, we'll see you guys either in person or on the webinars. Thank you for chatting it up with us everybody we appreciate you all and i'm super pumped to to talk to you very very soon on a stream coming near you for sure <laughs> bye yeah. everyone bye everybody